Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith here on YouTube. If you've ever heard a pastor or a prophet talk about how Christians apparently have the best sex, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I know this is an awkward topic. Stay with me. My apologies. Today we're going to be heading over to the YouTube channel of Mel Bond. Uh, this is a fellow who claims to be a prophet. He hears directly from God and apparently he's going to give us the uh, steps and procedures that we need to go through in order to experience um, <clears throat> divine sex. Yeah, I'm not making that up. Hope you're sitting down. Let's turn this on, and here we go. Yes, this is Mel Bond, and I've got some good news for you, mm. that God wants you to have divine sex. Okay, now, <laughs> I'm going to have to back that up, and, and I need to make a point here, and that is <laughs> that when Christians say, hey, I have good news to share with you, usually the good news has something to do with Jesus Christ dying for our sins. By the way, the, the Greek word euangelion, where we, which we get our um, uh, English word gospel from, it, it means good news. And in fact, let me show you this just because I'm really uncomfortable with this video and I'm trying to distract myself, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, and now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel. That's euangelion, good news. In fact, let's take a look at the Greek because I'm trying to delay even farther because I don't want to go back to that video yet because it's really making me uncomfortable. But uh, euangelion, it means, you know, good news. Good news is what it means, yes. And so usually... When Christians say to people, I have good news for you, it has usually something to do with, well, what this text says. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the good news I preach to you, which you received and which you stand, by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received— that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas into the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. He appeared then to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, to as, uh, uh, as, one, to, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. So usually the good news has something to do with, you know, Jesus dying you know, for our sins. <clears throat> so that being the case, I mean, this video kind of starts off in a weird spot, and that is, is the, a Christian guy claiming to be a prophet has good news. It, <laughs> it's not about Jesus dying for our sins. It has something to do with that. Well, let's back this up and see what we can do here. <clears throat> yes, this is Mel Bond, and I've got some good news for you, mm -hmm. that God wants you to have divine sex. See, he, he, he even looked uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by divine sex? No, I have to ask because how is he using this word? You know, is divine like a synonym for great? Or is divine a, a synonym for godly, you know, because, you know, think of it this way, godly would be according to the prescribed uh, you know, limitations and uses for human procreation and sex and things like that. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm not sure how he's using the word. Is it great? Is it fantastic? Or is it holy? You know, what exactly do you mean by saying this? Divine sex is sex that is totally uh, fulfilled, and satisfaction that is supernatural. Supernatural satisfaction. Wow. Okay, so how do I get me some of this? Okay. And a lot of the people in the world that uh, are interested in sex, in fact, as I... <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody, you know, uh, is interested in one way or another, yeah. Study statistics, that's one of the major concerns of humanity from the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. And so many people are not being fulfilled and satisfied. And They're not satisfied. There's no fulfillment there. Yeah. 
And that's because they're not experiencing the f- the formal recipe for, you know, <clears throat> divine sex. They go to so many different other sources than what God has designed trying to find it, and they end up disappointed, and they keep trying with an, an someone else, and it, it... They can't get no satisfaction. Got it. Okay. It doesn't happen. And so... If we want divine sex, God is the author of sex. And so as we study his word, we find out his instructions whereby that we can have divine sex. To where <laughs> there is a passage in scripture that actually explains how to have this high, more highly satisfying divine sex. Do you notice I'm uncomfortable with the subject? Our sex life can be fulfilled and mm-hmm. um, have full satisfaction. Have de- Notice how uncomfortable he is. Yes. Full satisfaction. So that's what divine means. Full satisfaction. Divine sex. Well, here's God's instructions. No- okay. So are you ready? Are you taking this down, folks? Because, I mean, if you've wanted to figure out what is the secret that the Bible teaches, apparently, for us to have divine sex... Here are the secret ingredients. One, it comes from a man and a woman as you study the Bible. Okay. And each person, the man and the woman, they need to be born again. They need. Right. So, you know, in order for this to happen, both people have to be born again. The male and the female must be born again. These are two requirements of divine sex. Except Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. Secondly, they need to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You see... <laughs> so let me see if I got this right. The real reason why people need to have the gift of tongues is so they can have divine sex. Which biblical text teaches that the gift of tongues has anything to do with divine sex? I've never seen the two related to each other. Experience in Acts in chapter 2, verse 4. No, Acts 2, 4 is not a passage about divine sex. Acts 2, 4 is the day of Pentecost and, you know, the Holy Spirit arriving and them speaking in other languages— but you, yeah, nowhere in Acts chapter two does it say they spoke in other languages. Oh, and had divine sex. Where you have a supernatural language, it's God's language, and God gives you that ability to speak His language. And uh, I have a teaching, little teaching session. Mm-hmm. On- so basically, I think he, what he's saying here is that those people who claim to speak in tongues, when they say shama hama handai. That literally has something to do with divine sex. And uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, if you have that interest. Mm -hmm. So, a person, both parties, must be born again, filled Mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, Mm -hmm. and they need to be married. uh, Okay, I would agree. Male and female, married. Um, Christian, you know, penitent believers in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. And, uh, And let's just say, as a result of that... They value and listen to what God's Word reveals regarding the proper use of sex. And they repent of all forms of sexual immorality. That would kind of be an important thing here, but what's with the speaking in tongues bit? In matrimony. And so the Bible says that what God has joined together, I mm-hmm. think that's Matthew chapter 19, right around verse 6, it says what God has joined together No man, no entity, no human can pull it apart. There'll be no divorces when people are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Statistically, that isn't true. Sadly, um, even Pentecostals experience a high percentage of divorces. So what this guy is saying is just nonsense. I'm not even sure why he put this out as an individual video. God wants you to have divine sex. No, God wants you to repent of sexual immorality and enjoy sex within the confines of a male-female married relationship and to basically, you know, rule out all other forms of sexual immorality and perversion. 
and to keep the marriage bed holy. And notice how I'm describing it then. It's, it's sex according to the way God prescribed it, not trying to sell you something and saying, hey, God wants you to have more satisfactory sex, you know, divine sex. It's like, Psst, hey, I got some good news for you. Unfortunately, we've got to put it in a brown paper bag. Yeah, this is just weird. Anyway, I think you get the point. If <laughs> you'd like to support us and see more videos like this, you could do so. All of the information on how to support us is below. Of course, like the, you know, like the video, share it with other people. And uh, as always, if you'd like to uh, hear more of this type of programming, you can also subscribe to our podcast over at Fighting for the faith.com until next time may god richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by jesus christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins amen